time here opening our hearts to him and worshiping him. And now we're going to take some time to go into his word. And our prayer is that his words would bring life to you today, would lift you up today, and that you would be better off after having spent this time together with us today. So we've been in our church, we've been in the midst of a series on the book of Romans that we started a little while ago. And even though we've got a little thrown off as far as how we're doing church, we decided we it would be right to go ahead and uh, keep going with the series that we started. We feel like God has some things that he wants to impart to us and enlighten us with from the book of Romans. So uh, if you haven't already, if you've been following us in this series, we just recommend just start reading through the whole book of Romans. It's not that long. Uh, and just maybe daily, just bite off a chapter or two. And just keep going over it and over it again. Guaranteed, every time you read it, something new will pop out to you. Because uh, God has a way of doing that, keeping things fresh all the time. So, um, so Buddy and I are here this morning just to uh, dig a little bit deeper in Romans. And we really, after talking and praying and sharing back and forth, we really felt this morning was all about a certain section of the book of Romans. As a matter of fact, nine verses of Scripture and we're going to go ahead and just read them. We'll put it up on the slide for you right now. This is Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. So follow along with us. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow. Uh, super There's a lot there, buddy. Oh, man. Uh, super encouraging. Um, uh, again, a lot to unpack. Um, but I, I guess I wanted to start off, I was thinking about this as, as, with regard to the scripture, mm-hmm. is I think a lot of times when crazy stuff happens or bad stuff happens in our life, I, I think subconsciously we start to think that maybe either I did something wrong or maybe God is just mad, right? Like w- w- what's causing yeah. all the things that are happening? And so uh, sometimes it's not always on a conscious level, but I think subconsciously, we start to believe this lie about God being mad. Yeah. And so this week, I was uh, emailing back and forth with someone from church, uh, Jesse, and uh, she, in the email, she put out this um, phrase, and it kind of jumped off the email to me, and I go, ah, oh, Mike, I think, I think this is it. This is what we're supposed to be encouraging people with out of this yeah. passage. And here's the phrase. You're going to hear it a lot today, because both Mike and I just think This was a timely thing from God. Here's the phrase we want to get at you today. Is God, he is not mad at you, he's dad at you. And that totally means a lot of different things than what I think we think subconsciously. We're going to look into these scriptures. We've got a couple of those that Mike already read. We're going to dive into there and really kind of expound on this idea of he's not mad. He's dad. He's dad. What do you think? You know, really... There's so much in the the eighth chapter here, but one way to view this is when you read through the whole thing, 
There's certainly an emphasis on the fatherhood of God. Here, yes. On him being our dad. Sonship. We, we are sons those, and daughters. Those of us who choose to believe in Jesus, we become sons of God. We, we're born into the family of God. We're, we, we, we join his household. He right? adopted us in right. like a dad. Right. Yeah. So he's our, he is literally our dad. You know, there's uh, places that uh, in the New Testament that use the word Abba, mm. referring to actually in this chapter, if you read further, it, it refers to Abba. That, that's a term of endearment. It's mm. like daddy. That's, that's the heart of God. for. He wants us to be our daddy. Now, he's almighty God, all right, but relationship-wise, closeness, yeah. that's the kind of relationship. That's his heart that comes out in this. So it's all through this eighth chapter of the book of Romans. But let's, we're going to, like Buddy said, kind of break it down, and yeah. we've got a few little pieces that we want to uh, just delve into a little bit deeper, verse by verse. And here's one. This is the first part of the 32nd verse. So Romans 8, 32a, we could say. It's, it says this. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Wow. I mean, we could just spend the whole time talking about that this morning. But, you know, this is referencing, again, if you back up and remember what he just said in verse 31, he talked about God being for us, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's connected to this verse here. God is for us, and how is God for us? Yeah. You know, in what way is he for us? Well, he goes on right after that to tell us at least one thing. He says, here's how God, our dad, mm -hmm. is for us. He did not spare his own son. The father heart of God, the dad heart of God was willing to even give his only son. For what reason? For us all. Yeah. He gave his only son, Jesus, for us all. What does that mean? So that, that not only would he have one son, but he would have a house full of sons. As a matter of fact, God's invitation is open to whoever wants to become a son. Mm -hmm. That's his heart. That's how many children mm. God wants to fill his house, right? So here we have in many versions the message of the gospel, right? The good news of Jesus is that God, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Mm. There it is right there. So God did not spare his son. Why? Because of his daddy heart for us. Mm. He want, and all he's asking us to do is believe what he did for us through Jesus mm -hmm. and embrace that, and then we, we become sons too. It's awesome. Well, you know, while you're talking, I was thinking of uh, poker, and I was thinking, you know, when you have the best hand, um, you push all your chips in because the potential for getting the reward, you're going to get money. Sure. And I feel like while you were talking, it was almost like God saw that the reward was a potential relationship with us. Yes. And he took all his chips and he says, he I'm committed. In. I'm all, all in. in. I'm all in for yeah. them. That's, what, that's, that's as hard as a dad for us. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like, uh, you know, we, we're on TV a little. We're streaming. But uh, it could be like an infomercial. You know, like I, you say, oh, he loves us. He gave his son. And I feel like in this first, there's a, wait, there's more. <laughs> but there's more. There's more. If you, know? you order and, now. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's a free gift, but wait, and there's more. Like, so he didn't just stop there. And um, so, you know, you said it was 32A. Mm -hmm. Well, 32B, the, the continuation of that verse yeah. uh, reads this. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Right. And so I think, you know, we need, the, we need to know he's our dad, but we also, as a dad, you know, we need to know he's not mad. He's not punishing me. No. Is he going to help me? Because I got some real things going on right now. Yeah. Right? There's a lot going on, and I need to know, is he, is, he, is he here to help us? And right here, he's saying, yeah, I didn't just, I didn't, I didn't just go all in no. to leave you alone. No. I, I got more grace. I want to, like, help you with what's going well, on. He not also. I mean, yeah. he, uh, that's connected to what's he talking about. The giving of his son, he gave his son. Will he not also, along with him, along with the gift of his son, graciously give us all things, yeah. right? So there's more. Good news. <laughs> I mean, really? He's crazy about, yeah. he's crazy about us. Yeah. Um, so uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk about that I felt like when I was praying that God is saying he wants to help us with is our families. You know, I, I feel like a, a couple things is he's just going, yeah, I see what's happening. Like we're all trapped in these little 
houses together, right? Like mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I'm going to take a vacation over to the family room today, <laughs> right? Like that's, right. you know, it's like we're trapped together. And so uh, the first thing I wanted to mention is like, um, even like our spouses, right? Um, we might not be used to being around them all the time. And I don't know, like I know we're supposed to be all perfect, <laughs> but sometimes people get on other people's nerves. And so mm-hmm. I, I feel like God is saying, I want to help. Yeah. I want to grow your relationships. Yeah. And uh, so specifically when I was praying, I feel like I want to talk, um, sometimes this happens in, in a marriage where uh, somebody at home is an extrovert and somebody's an introvert. And now they're together all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm, just a magic mix of fun, <laughs> right? And nice. so I think what God is saying, like, uh, I, I feel like he wants to encourage the extroverts, and he wants to say this. He wants to say, I'm, I graciously want to help you with this, but maybe what you think you need help with is a little bit different. I think uh, the extroverts might be thinking, God's going to help me and have this person talk to me all the time. And what, what God's saying is, <laughs> I want to help grow you to be a more understanding and loving person towards your introverted spouse. Yeah, it works both ways. Yeah, and you might have to go, I'm going to give them like a whole hour alone or something. And here's the thing. like, So if if this is speaking to you and you're the extrovert, I got a a little tip here. Let's say you gave them an hour of free time, your introverted spouse. Don't go check on them during the hour to see how it's going. (laughs) Now, I know if you're an extrovert, that's crazy talk. Like, I just want to see them and see how it's going. Give them the hour and then see if it wasn't like a short-term investment and that it actually pays off dividends. Now, mind you, the introvert, you're not off scot-free either because I think that God in this time would graciously like to help you with a relationship and he's going to stretch you a little and say, we could do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You could come out more. Um, If you're the introvert and your spouse is an extrovert, they probably need you now more than ever. Mm. They're used to interacting with millions of people all the time, right? They're like little hummingbirds, always talking to everyone. And now they're with you and you're going, oh my gosh. Well, God can help you graciously to create a space to like interact with them where you actually enjoy it. So that's one thing. And then real quick, also on the family line, Gosh, a lot of things have happened with the schools closing. And uh, there's a lot of people out there who were going about their lives. They had a nice plan. And now the kids are home all the time. And that, this can cause a lot of anxiety. And I just want to say that I think God wants to help with that. I think if you would take some time, find a space, and go, Lord, would you help? I think that he wants to help. I think he wants to say, hey, yeah, I I will direct to the right people to give some information. There's some online stuff that I can help them with. Mm -hmm. He wants to be a help in here. He's not not just because it's a practical thing. It's not like he's out. He wants to help. And so for all those parents that you have this new situation, it's it's very stressful. I just say go to God and also believe that he has anointed you to be parents over those children. Mm-hmm. Nobody loves those children like you. And if you turn to him, I think he's going to turn this into one of the most beautiful things that has ever happened in your relationship with your children. Um, again, I don't, think, uh, I don't think if we misinterpret what he's doing, he's going to grow us. But he's not. Go ahead, Mike. What's our phrase? He's not mad at you, he's dad at you, Yeah. right? Why does he want to help us in our families in these specific areas that you mentioned here? Why, did, why does God want to help us? Because he's our dad. Yeah, he cares about the family right? unit, right? He wants right? to help. He wants to help every part of our life because he knows with him involved, everything's going to be better. Yeah. When we block him out, when we exclude him, mm. it's always worse. Yep. It's always worse. We need to learn that and include him in every part of our life. He's not mad, he's dad. All right, let's go to another verse and dig in a little bit more. Uh, We were led specifically to this one, verse 37. Let's revisit this one. A lot of people know this particular verse, right, buddy? Oh, there was a book, right, in the 70s or 80s, Terry Mize. Yeah, I I know the guy who wrote that book, man. A lot of people got high on that. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Spiritually high. Um, All right, got to qualify qualify that. Um, But anyway, let's, let's have a look here at verse 37. It says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's mm. through Christ, through God, because of their love for us, right? I want, you to, I want you to notice in that verse, there's present tense. When are we more than conquerors? Now, it says we are in all these things. Yeah. And we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, yeah. In all these things, we are. will be oh. when the pressure's off, when finally the trouble's over, when the storm passes. No, 
it's making a big deal about letting us know right now. We need to know this right now in all the things yeah, that yeah. we might be dealing with. We, have, we are more than conquerors right now, okay, because of his love. So in all these things, and again, he's connecting. It's progressive, right? Line yeah. upon line. He mentions something, and then he connects something else after it. So he, he mentions here um, trouble or hardship. Mm. I mean, what can fall under those categories? Yeah, you know? wait, so we're more than conquerors in trouble. Right. So he's saying here, I know it's almost counterintuitive, yeah. right? We think we're going to be more than conquerors. We're going to be victorious as soon as the dust settles, right? Uh, yeah, I think we've bought into a lie that things are only okay if things are okay. Yeah. And this is saying in the trouble, uh, he's, he's trying to take us to a different place where you're already, you're more right. than conquerors now in that. He's trying to take us to a place of reality in Christ. Yeah. If we believe in him, if we're a son along with Christ, he's wanting us to know some information. Hey, even in the midst of what you're dealing with right now, you know what? You already are more than a conqueror. Mm -hmm. You already have the victory. Even though you're not feeling like it, it doesn't seem like it, I'm telling you, the victory is already done for you, all right? So he mentions trouble, hardship, persecution, famine. I mean, that's, that's pretty tough, right? Yeah. You, you can't get any, yeah. any food to eat. Nakedness, you can't even clothe yourself, or danger, yeah. danger of any kind. I mean, we're dealing with a form of danger right now, right? Yeah. With the virus. So, or sword, wartime, you know, you're actually afraid for your life. Yeah. Somebody's going to take your life. So these are the things that he's connecting to the truth that in all these things, mm -hmm. even though we may be experiencing them right now, right now in that we are more than conquerors through Christ. Now, a conqueror would be awesome, right? Knowing that we're like, Okay, I, okay, God says I'm victorious in this, cool. But he, he goes a step further. He goes, you, no, I want you to know you are more yeah. than conquerors. I heard somebody use this illustration of a professional boxer goes into the ring and pounds it out for how many rounds, 15 rounds or whatever, right? And ends up winning. I mean, it was grueling, right? And he wins big money, big purse money for winning that fight. He goes home, after everything's wrapped up, goes home, get, has the check, Goes home, gives it to his wife. She says, thank you very much, and takes it to the bank. He was a conqueror, but she's more than a conqueror, right? Yeah. But she didn't have to fight the battle. Now, now God's not saying that we don't have to endure certain things or experience certain things, but, but the, the crux of it, the brunt of it, God is wanting us to know, you know what? Somebody's already fought that battle yeah. for you spiritually. Yeah. And because of his, and he won the victory, and his name's Jesus. And because of his victory that he won, we share in that victory. We didn't lift a sword or a spear to fight that battle. But you know what? God says, because you're in my son, mm -hmm. he was victorious. You're more than a conqueror now yeah. through him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that uh, myself, and uh, especially if people are perfectionists, when things are off and the plan is off, we, we think we got to immediately get back to, um, to the normal, right? right, to, right. We, and, and if I get there, yeah. then I've conquered and everything's yeah. okay. And this is kind of saying in the mess, yeah. we're more than conquerors. And learn, learn that you have the victory in the mess. Yeah. yeah. And, and some of it, uh, when we were reading through this and praying through it, I, I, the nakedness and the, the famine, it, it, the, the thing that stirred up in me that's kind of going on now is there's a lot of uncertainty about jobs <laughs> and about money. Right. And that's real. That's like, oh, man, right? So that, that almost negative thing comes in, and immediately we want to, like, go, what's control? I must yeah. conquer this thing. Yeah. I must fight this. Yeah. And there's a tendency for us as humans to kind of like put God over here because I've got to do this to get back to conquering. Mm. And I think here what he's saying is open the door, let me in, and we'll start with more. I, yeah. I think he's saying you could conquer. And it, like, you know, we, some of us do pretty good about certain things. Sure. Or we can stay connected to the one who is guaranteed to conquer all. Right, right. And if because, we stay, you know, if, if we've got it, we, we are limited as far as how far we can go. We can do some things, yeah, sure. but it always comes to an end. Right. He's not limited. More than conquerors. So I kind of had this when I was praying. I feel like um, for me, there's a, there's a trust thing, 
right? When everything goes crazy, uh, rather than kind of like go, oh, God, just take care of this, right? Some people seem to be really easy trusters, and that's not necessarily me. Um, I, I kind of go, let's figure everything out, right? And so I, I kind of have this little exercise that I was going to give people maybe as a symbolic act of looking to God and saying, God, this is important to me. I, this is not okay what's going on, but rather than me own this, I'm going to look to you and I'm going to trust you. I want to go from trying to conquer this myself mm. to living in the place where I am more than a conqueror, yeah. where I'm connected with you. Right. And so here's the exercise. I, I want um, you know, people at home, if you can think of an area that maybe you're having a hard time trusting him. For example, uh, maybe there's some uncertainty right now with your job or your <laughs> financial future. I want you to take out a piece of paper and uh, put that on a piece of paper. And then if you have something at home um, that, that maybe ma- makes you think about God, maybe you have a cross or a picture on the wall, or uh, maybe best case scenario is a paper Bible. What I want you to do is kind of just real quick, prayerfully go, God, I've been anxious about this. I do, I do want this to work out, but I'm going to give it to you, and I'm going to trust you. Mm. I want to go from trying to conquer this myself to believing in the one that you've already done it. It is finished, and that all I need to do with regard to this is listen to you and follow your leading. Hmm. And I want you to give it to him. In some symbolic way, I want you to put it in the Bible and close it. And then you you know, if you're like me, that the thoughts are going to come back. But by doing the physical act, you can go, no, that's not mine. Yeah. And the only time you want to like engage thinking about it is if you think the Lord is directing it, okay? Mm-hmm. He's directing. And so you're, you're trusting him to take care of this. Maybe for you, it's not the money. Maybe it's something we already talked about. Maybe it's your kids, right? We got, we, I don't know what to do. Uh, everyone's saying that the governor's going to close school for the rest of this year. Lord, I don't know what to do, but I know you do. I'm not going to try to conquer this, but you are. That's good. Anybody out there uh, a little scared if you're just being honest about your health? Or maybe you know somebody who, uh, who's, who's already has the virus or who's in the hospital. And, and you're going, man, I don't know. And, and rat, you're trying to like own it yourself. And you're going, hey, I'm going to encourage you to write that on a piece of paper and, and say that prayer to God and say, God, I'm trusting you with it. This is yours. And close it down. Say, I'm not taking that back. Lord, even if I try, I'm going to ask you to keep it. And just help me through this. I'm going to ask you to speak in this direction and, and just help me with it. And then um, only do what he says. So awesome. uh, again, I think with this, like if you panicked and you freaked out and you maybe even did some things wrong, I think he's saying, I just need you to know I'm not mad about it. Mm-hmm. I understand what you're going through. <laughs> I love you. And I will graciously help you with this. I, you, you're more than a conqueror already to me is what he's saying. Yeah. I already did this. Just let me, let me, let me you know, Jesus, take the wheel. Let me, awesome. let me run this ship. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool what you did here, buddy. And I was thinking as you were doing this, if the thoughts come back, oh, the worry and all that. You know, wherever, if you did this in your Bible like you did here, every time you walk by and you see that, you're reminded God's got it. Yes. Right? So there's a physical reminder, a visual reminder right there. So Absolutely. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, let's go on. We've got a couple more for you. Uh, let's go back to reread verses 38 and 39. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow. Now here, he's making a big deal and he's focusing on his love for us. And he's saying in this passage, he's saying, I want you to know, and he goes into detail, and he he gives all kind of scenarios, potential scenarios that maybe could possibly separate us from God's love for us, and he wants us to know real clear, he's punching the point home, he says there's nothing, there is nothing that you could imagine, nothing will ever be able to separate you from the love that God has for you. Why? Because he's not mad at you. Right. He's dad at you, right? Yeah. So because of what Jesus did and his death on the cross and his, his uh, resurrection after three days 
and then he ascended to heaven. He did all that for us. Because of what Jesus did, we will never be separated from our heavenly dad's love for us. It's awesome. I, I think one of the reasons God had this written is because we think when these things happen that there's a separation. Yeah. We feel a gap. And he, he knew that was going to happen. So he's encouraging us here. And he's like, hey, I need you to know. And it's almost like he listed some biggies. Some oh. things that are like, hey, these are real things. Life and death. Death. Like, right? so what about if I know somebody that died? That's real. That's like, and, and so somebody might say, well, God must not love me. I must not have the favor of God. Yeah. Death has separated me from the love of God. Neither yeah. life nor death. He's, yeah. he's letting us know. How about um, not, not the future, not the present, not what's going on now, or what's going to happen. The uncertainty about what's going to happen. He's yeah. letting us know. That's a big deal, but that can't take away my love. Right. It's almost like he power ranked things because he created all, right? Yeah. And he goes, I, he ranked them and he goes, here's the thing. Um, in the ranking, like there's powers. There's like, I, I think some people go, man, what's going on? Is this a spiritual thing? Yeah. Even if it were, he's ranked his love for you higher. That thing can't get in the middle of you and your dad. No. Nothing you do, nothing in all creation can no. separate you from that love. Yeah. So uh, it's amazing that he goes, I sent Jesus and I have more. Nothing's going to take me away now. I, I, nothing's going to separate me. Yeah. Um, but we, we think that. So I, I think we think he, he might be mad and then we go, oh, wait, he's not. He's, he's guaranteed right. me. He let me know in writing. So then how do we connect with him? Right? I think sometimes like with what's going on now, I've talked to a lot of people and uh, Mike, I feel like a lot of people are telling me, um, some people are feeling lonely. Mm -hmm. Some people are feeling sad. Uh, there's a lot of people in fear telling me, I'm scared. I'm going through this. Um, someone I love is sick. Someone I love is in a field that puts them at risk. I'm concerned because I might be more vulnerable to this thing, right? People are saying all these things. And so all these things are like maybe you know, making them like not look to God. And I think he's going, hey, just know I'm right here. Yeah. Just kind of turn your head to here. Yeah. And, and when I do that, though, some of these things are so big. What's happening right now is so, um, I don't know about you, but I, I feel like in the last two weeks, I have seen and heard the word unprecedented hmm. an unprecedented amount of times. Everything it is, is unprecedented. It is yeah. absolutely crazy <laughs> because this thing is Never so before. ridiculous yeah. how big it is. And so we're, we're looking at that and we're going, I don't even know where to begin. And so like even with God, I don't even know how to pray. Like, is that real? Like, is he, is he going to go, well, you're just not spiritual enough, and then he's mad, and he's just going to shut off, right? I don't know. Like, so this is what, what gets in our head. So what, yeah. what do you say to that? Yeah, well, what I say is what the Bible says, what Jesus said. He promised those who believe on him that he would send his Holy Spirit, which he has. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit, he described him in many different ways, but one main way he described the Spirit is our helper, he said, I'm going to send you another. He was their helper while he was with them physically. But he goes, I'm going to send you another helper. And he's going to be the comforter. And he's going to lead you. And he's going to teach you. And he's going to help you in every part of, of your life. So that's the love of dad for us. He goes, you know what? While you're walking this earth life out, and you're not with me in heaven yet, you're going to need some help from me. And I'm going to make sure that you have the help that you need. And it's the person of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, buddy, while we were kind of working through this this week and kind of studying and meditating on some of this, uh, my thoughts came to a section that we didn't include today, but it's back in verses 26 and through 28. And it's talking about uh, the Holy Spirit being our helper in prayer. So you're mentioning how do we even pray. Yeah. The Holy Spirit, hands on, Mm. wants to help us in our praying. Mm. So, you know, and it describes, it says, when we don't know what we should pray for as we ought, the Holy Spirit will help us in our weaknesses. You know, we need to depend on him. We need to know that he's there. It's not just us on our own trying to get through to God. He's within us. And here's, here's kind of a phrase that came to me this week. I shared it with you. I thought it was good enough to pass along. The Holy Spirit in us will pray through us for us. Mm. I'll just say that one more time. The Holy Spirit in us as believers in Jesus will pray through, he will pray through us yeah. for us. Yeah. 
I mean, how cool is that? Now, it's one, that's a whole different dimension than just saying, oh, Lord, help me to pray this prayer. I mean, there is that help. But this even goes it a step further, and it says, you know what? There are times where he's not just going to be helping you to pray what you need to pray. If you will yield to the spirit within you, you know what? There's times he's going to actually be doing the praying. He's going to be doing the praying through you, and we could connect this if we want to. We don't have time now. But elsewhere in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul talked about praying in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Praying in the Spirit. I really feel that this is connected to that. We're not just praying on our own, just us praying, even with a little bit of help from God. We're praying in the Spirit. In other words, there's a place where we're literally allowing the Spirit in us to pray through us. I know that might sound kind of crazy to some people, but that, there's a really deep spiritual truth here. Mm. And so, and, and it says here in, in these verses back in 26 to 28, he's in us praying through us for us. So think about this picture. We got God praying to God. Mm. What kind of prayer is that? I mean, think about that got to be good. I mean, sometimes, you know, I, I, I think, you know, I'm like everybody, you know, you have your doubts and stuff and you're praying, ah, I hope that one got through, you know what I mean? You're praying, but man, alive. I don't think the Holy Spirit, if he's the one actually doing the praying, I don't think he's ever hoping or wondering, I wonder if this prayer got through. He's, he's already through. He's God. Yeah. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is God, you know, and he's the same God along with the Father. So the Holy Spirit praying through us for us to the Father, and the Bible says when you read through the rest of that, the Father, our Daddy who loves us, knows what the Spirit is praying. He understands the prayer of the Spirit, even if we don't understand what the Spirit's praying. The Father does, and then it's connected to, we love that verse in 28, you know, we know all things work together for good. Yeah. We quote that a lot, but you know what? What I just said is connected to that. Mm. When we receive the help of the Holy Spirit in our praying and even at times allow him to pray through us for us, that leads us to the place of everything working together for good. How could it not mm. with God praying to God for us on our behalf? Yeah. Crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, well, kind of in wrapping up, uh, what I thought is um, in just a second, I would actually like to close reading through the whole passage again. And then maybe uh, just a quick prayer. Um, for those of you at home, just kind of as a summary, as a wrap-up, God is absolutely all in on you. He sent his son. He proved it. Um, he's all in on you, and he proved it, and he wants you to be part of his family. And he didn't stop there. He's interested in everything that's going on. Um, when he pushes chips all in, he was saying, I'm all into you. And so whatever's going on, I, I'm going to encourage you to include him on. Yeah. Let me read through this passage one more time before I close in prayer. Romans 8, 31 through 39. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things who will bring any charge against them, those whom God has chosen it is God who justifies who then is the one who condemns no one Christ Jesus who died more than that who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us who shall separate us from the love of Christ Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. For those of you who are watching here today, um, I'm going to encourage you. If you've never prayed and, and you think right now, you know what, I believe that and I've never prayed, I'm going to ask you right now, place your hand over your heart and just say with me, 
God, I believe that you love me. I believe you sent your son for me. And I ask forgiveness of all my sins. And I ask you to welcome me into your family. I want you to be my dad. I believe you do that from your heart. His answer was yes. And his answer was yes 2,000 years ago. And for those of you who are in the middle of something, totally get it. We'd love to be there to help you. But I can tell you that there's somebody who's right there, who was always right there. And he's saying, I will graciously help you all things. I'm going to ask you to turn to him in prayer. I'm going to pray right now. Father, we just ask for your help. Um, Just lead, guide, and direct us. For all those that need help, we're asking for your help there. For all those who are anxious, Lord, there's a lot happening in our minds, in our hearts, in our feelings. We need your help. We're looking to you. We're asking you to graciously help us with those things. Lord, in our own homes, we're, we're trying to, you know that we're rhythmic and that we like patterns and we're, we're, we're all discombobulated. We're asking for your help. We're asking you to lead, guide, and direct us. We're asking for your help in all these things. Lord, we're asking for um, provision for jobs, for the money. We're asking for direction. Um, Help us even lead us in our friendships to know who to reach out to. Father, we're looking to you and we ask for all those things and we ask for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One closing word and we'll we'll sign off. I just want to reiterate for the very last time, God is absolutely not mad at you. He's dad at you. Hope to see you soon.